One of the most difficult but important processes in creating a self-authored test is the ability to validate the test is scoring correctly. It's called quality assurance, it can be called validation, uh, it can be called establishing correctness, a lot of different ways to look at it. Uh, we've called them the ability to create test cases. Uh, so in the bottom right hand here, uh, it's this beaker that shows your ability to go in the lab and create a test case. So I'm going to open this test and we'll go back to that screen to test case, but I need to show you a little bit about this test. It's a very simple three question test. Each of them has a right wrong response. What's the capital of Pennsylvania? It's Harrisburg. You get a point value of one. Indiana, it's Indianapolis, capital of the United States, Washington, D.C. So there's up to three correct answers here. So I've created a score called total points and I've included these three responses. So I should be able to get between zero and three points depending how well I do on this test. I've also created a band score that says if I score between zero and one, I'm going to get a fail result. If I score between two and three, I'm going to get a pass result. So if I get more right than wrong, we're going to pass you on. And I've just created a simple out of box standard report that show the scores. So that is my test. It's one of the simplest versions of a test you could probably build. So I'm going to go now to my test cases and generate some sample data on that. So to begin, I can say if there are correct values, I can say give me a test case that has everything correct. The system goes in and annotates those three values as correct. I could save that. I could run that test case. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll click on run that test case and it's going to tell me, hey, you passed. Um, the thing about the pass scenario is it's going to pass everything that you have not created expected values in. So in this case, we did not create any expected values. So if it passed scoring criteria, there are no failures, it's going to show up passed. What you can do to make this more powerful is to I'm sorry, is to go into that result and say, I actually have some expected values. If I get them all right, I should get a three and I should pass. Uh, so I'm going to click save here and then I'm going to run that one more time. We'll see the same pass condition, but we'll see a little bit more data on that result screen. So as you can see, we've passed uh, and it now shows expected value of three, pass and pass. So you're getting matches uh, on your uh, expected values. Now I'm going to go in and I'm just going to auto generate 10 test cases. It doesn't take a long time. It depends on how big your test is. This is a three question test, so it's going to run pretty fast. And we made the decision to say if there are no expected values, we go ahead and pass it. It can be a little bit deceiving to begin with, uh, but let's look at some of these results as we go in and do it. Uh, so I've generated 10 test cases. It annotates them as auto-generated, so maybe you can double check and say, oh, that was auto-generated. I need to do a little bit more work on it. Uh, in this case, the, the correct response here, let's go ahead and run it. We got a negative score or a raw score of negative one. Okay? In our scenario, that should generate a fail. Uh, so I'm going to go in and say uh, this is a fail. Hit save. Uh, I can rerun that test case uh, at any point and see whether or not it's passed. I am going to delete a few of these so we don't have so many to work with. So just showing you a little more functionality. I can delete any of the test cases. I've deleted four or five. Uh, but I want to make sure that my results are actually valid. So when we look at this, the correct responses are uh, Harrisburg, Indianapolis, and Washington, D.C. And if we click edit here, that means AAB. Uh, so in some of these test cases that have been auto-generated, I want to see what our values are. We are AAC, I'm sorry, DAC. Uh, so we got one right uh, and missed the other couple. Let's look at another example. Uh, so I have BBB. So those are all wrong. So I should get a raw score of zero and a score of fail. Uh, and then let's just rerun these and see what happens. We should get uh, some passes. I don't know if we have any failures. Yes, we do on the second one. Uh, just so we can say, hey, we got to double check the scoring here and make sure uh, whether it's right or wrong. And we do have some failures now because we've actually put in expected test cases. 
So this starts to get more helpful. So the system is saying I should get a negative one uh, and on pass fail I'm getting a zero and expected value is failed. Uh, so we've done something wrong there so we need to correct that. So this test case generation allows you to do a lot of complex things uh, without having to key in a bunch of values. Here let's do uh, quickly an all incorrect test case. Uh, we got them all incorrect. Let's hit save. Uh, let's run that and see what happens. So I'm going to hit all incorrect, run that, and see what happens. Uh, in the case of all incorrect, I'm viewing that result. I pass, pass. One thing that I did notice on my setup that came up in one of our test cases, and this is a great way to check your work, is that we can actually get a negative value on this exam. Uh, in one of these items, I put in a negative number. Uh, so I can correct that uh, by removing the negative numbers and saying, oh, that should have been a zero. So zero is going to be our lowest score. Or I could change my band score so that a negative number is possible. I'm going to do the simplest thing remove all the zeros, and then our test cases should be, uh, our scores validation should work based on the lowest score being a zero. I could also blank this out, uh, and that would correct for some of those uh, unknown lows on the test range side. So I'm going to hit save, and then I'm going to hop back into our test cases and do a run one more time uh, and make sure that everything is correct or incorrect. So. Our raw score, if it's all incorrect, should be zero, and we should fail. Uh, that should be the expected results. And if we get them all correct, we should get a three, and we should pass. So I'm just going to run those again real quickly, and you can see the engine at work. So as I hit run for the all correct, it's going to pass me. For the all incorrect, it's going to pass me. I can view that result and see what's expected. Just for kicks, uh, to finish kind of the concept off, I'm going to hit pass here, and I'm going to say this is what I'm expecting. I'm expecting this to pass. And I'm going to rerun these test cases, and I should get a failure on that second case. So that will tell me either something's wrong with my scoring or something is wrong with my expected values. So I can view my results and say I got a fail pass here. Something is wrong. Go look and see what's right. And to rectify this, as we all know, uh, if I hit uh, fail here, uh, the test cases should run uh, just fine again. So I'm going to run those test cases and we'll see passes. So we've annotated this with passed in green, uh, failed in red, and we've allowed you to auto-generate up to 100 test cases at a time. We've done all max point values, all min point values. This is the concept of all A's. This is the concept of all D's or all C's, the right-hand end. Uh, you can do uh, you can do a random answer uh, set up here, so I could say I want BBB, uh, and you can produce your own test cases that way. So a lot of different ways to get to certain values, but the test case generation is a great help uh, to make sure that your test is scoring correctly.